approaching the place where Nandini and Vandiyathevan were standing, Prince and Manamegala arrived. As he approached, the prince came towards Vandiyathevan. When he came near, he looked up at Nandini. He saw blood oozing from red line-like wounds on one of her cheeks and one shoulder. Oh! Did that wretched tiger hurt you, or what? He said. Yes, sir. But that tiger only wounded my body, not the chest. These words flowed through Karakalar's heart. Before he could say anything, Manamegala went nervously to Nandini and said, Yes, sister. It's a good cut. I've brought Anjanam for good luck. Come on, I'll put it on. If you put it on right away, the wound will heal quickly. She said. Brother. Such wounds are common to me. I have received many wounds and healed them. Is there any medicine to heal the wound in the chest, tell me? She said. Oh. There it is, sister. There it is. After telling Manamegali, she took Nandini by the hand and went to the marble hall. The prince and Vandiyadeva went a little further back and sat on a washstone platform under a spacious mango tree near the hall. Sir. The sooner we leave here, the better. If we stay longer, Kanamaran and his father might think something wrong, said Vandiyathevan. Let whoever wants to misjudge us. Will they buy our heads, what? It is enough if these women do not misjudge us. When they come, they can tell and leave, said the prince. After some time, Nandini and Manamegali were dressed up in new clothes. Anjanam had smeared the blood wound on Nandini's cheek and shoulders so that it was not visible. We were waiting for you to leave, said Carrie Kaler. Very well, it is past the high hour and we must dine with us and leave. If I let you go at this time, the daughter of Sambuvarayar will never forgive me, said the Queen of Pavur. We are on one condition, Manamekali has applied Anjanam to your wound. Isn't it if you say that there is some Anjanam for the wound of the chest? We are there if you tell us what that Anjanam is, said Carrie Kaler. Shall we guess it ourselves without asking her? Said Nandini. Perhaps the forgetfulness caused by the passage of time, said Carrie Kaler. That can't be, isn't there a chest ulcer that doesn't change with time? Said Nandini. There's a good cure for a sore throat in women. That's tears. Vandiyathevan said. Prince Valadha was waiting for an opportunity to ravish women, but he was wrong. If some kind of chest injury occurs, the power of tears is lost. Then how can it be used as a threat? Said Nandini. If we're both wrong, tell me your guess. Vandiyathevan said. Why, I say, sister. Does not the fear you mention go to the chest through the ear? You say that the pleasure that arises in the harp, the pipe, and the sweet voice itself is the fear of the wound of the chest. Said Nandini. Yes, sister. How did you know? Asked Manamegali. Did I say I'm a witch? I have the power to read the minds of others. Sir. Do you too agree with that rare power of will? Asked Nandini. Yes, yes. I agree that it was our fault for not being able to guess that. I remember when Ken Thamaran said that Manamekali was excellent in the art of music and played the harp very well, said Carrie Kaler. Shouldn't this be the case with Damayan? Every day that he doesn't tell someone about his sister's praise is like a day of rebirth for Prince Kadamper. What he said about Manamekali's musical talent is true. She has even taken Manamekali's lyre. Fortunately, she doesn't have the compulsion to sing with only me, who doesn't know the glory of Kanavathai. Oh, sir. Bidet. You have saved us women from being eaten by the tiger today. Shouldn't we thank you for that? You should dine with us and drink the elixir of music from Monimi Kalat, insisted Nandini. Vandiyadeva signaled to the prince not to comply. He never noticed it. The will of the princesses is our privilege said Carrie Kaler. Manamekali. Your desire has been fulfilled. Go and see if the cooking is done. If not, hurry it up a bit, Nandini urged. 
Manamegali immediately got up and went towards the place where the cooking took place. At the same time Vandiyadeva also stood up and looked around. Nandini noticed it and said, Didn't I say earlier that I have the magical power to know what is in the minds of others? I want to test it now. Shall I tell you what is in the mind of Valadha Prince? She asked. Karagalar smiled and said, Tell me and we'll see. Said. He sympathizes with the fact that he killed the tiger and saved these women. He thinks that it would have been better if they both had gone into the tiger's belly. Karagalar laughed further and said, Friend. Do you think so? He asked. No, sir. I didn't think so. But what I thought about the tiger and these people is true. I wonder how the tiger escaped alive after being caught by them. He said. What, brother? Are you wondering? Did the tiger escape? Did it come back? The dead tiger's body floated in the water. Where is it? The prince stood up and asked. Look at that. Vandiyathevan pointed out. A water's edge was visible between the branches of a tree not far from where they were. The boat in which the princesses came was moored there. The leopard was trying to get into the boat by grasping the end of the boat with its forepaws. Aha! This tiger's life is so bad! said Kari Kaler. Sir! Come on, let's go kill it and come back. It's wrong to let a wounded tiger live! said Valavarayan. Monkey warrior! Why should you two soldiers bother about a wounded tiger? I will call Manamegali. She will kill the tiger with the small knife in her hand. Said Nandini. You see, my friend. The Queen of Pavur has such a high regard for our heroism. Shall I come too? Are you the only one coming? Said Carrie Kaler. Or send a bell? Said Nandini. Manamegali can be sent, but what if the woman has brought the wounded tiger alive with Anjanam ointment? Vandiyadeva muttered. What are you thinking? Said the prince. I am thinking whether I should cut off the head of the wounded tiger and present it at the feet of the queen of Palvur. We will see if she is satisfied, said Vandiyathevan and walked away. Did you hear what that fool said? Does it take a lot of bravery to cut off the head of a wounded tiger? Carrie Kaler started laughing while listening to Nandini's face and stopped laughing midway. Would you like to comment on that? said Nandini. Kari Kaler Tegam was thrilled. In a shaky voice, he said, Nandini. You sent the straw to Kanamaran. That's why I came here. Otherwise I wouldn't have come. You have honored my request so long ago. Congratulations! said Nandini. I thought you had forgotten everything that had gone on. I assumed that was why you sent the straw. Can you forget everything, sir? Have you forgotten everything? I can't forget it, I can't forget it. You asked me for a boon with tears in your eyes. I didn't give it. I was mad at that time. I still haven't forgotten it. But why did you send me the straw? Why did you ask me to come here? Asked the prince. Sir. You haven't come to Tanjavur for three years. You didn't come to see your sick father. He is not only my father, Nandini. Yes, he is the father of the youngest brat. He is also the father of Pani's brother. Yet it is their father's fault that he does not see them. Someone has told the emperor that I am the reason for his absence. So he never sees me. Sir. Is not all the harm they have already done to me enough? Do I want this blame to fall on me? But is it true? I didn't come to Tanjore because of you. Then I will leave Tanjore. You shall come to Tanjore, sit on your father's throne and crown yourself. Nandini. That is a matter of one day. I have no desire for the throne now. Let Madhurand Hakadivan sit on the throne and wear the crown of the empire and rule the kingdom. Sir. They know Madhurand Hagar very well. Can he rule this great empire one day? If he can't rule, he's got saviors to help him, you're there too. Sir. 
I see that your wishes are good now. I am leaving Tanjore, from Palyavur Palace, you come to Tanjore. No, no. You are mistaken. I have no such intention. All my previous crimes are enough for you. Don't add the disadvantage of chasing you from the Palavur Palace. Sir. Can't we both stay in Tanjore? Is there no place for both of us in that big city? We don't even need to see each other. It may not be necessary to see, but is it possible not to think? You said it a while ago. You said that you can't forget everything that's gone, and you also said about the wound in your heart. My heart is also wounded and I can't forget it. Can't forget maybe, but can't forgive? Can't forgive my crimes even after all this time. Nandini. You have committed no crime that I can forgive. I am the one who committed the crime, I owe you an apology. Even when I left Kanji, I left with the thought that I could apologize to you. But a piece of news I learned on the way made me unfit to apologize to you. Komakin. Your apology to me is in no way worthy. You are sons of the earth ruling emperor, an orphan abandoned by my father and mother. No, Nandini. You are not an orphan girl. Despite the fact that Thanatakari Palyavatare has willingly acknowledged me as his junior queen. Besides, Nandini. I'm at a loss as to how to tell you the truth. You can say whatever you want to this ghost girl. All the passers-by dare to say something to me. They tease me and insult me. Nandini. I can't bear it for a moment if anyone behaves like that again. All you have to do is send him to Yamanyalaku immediately and I'll see to it again. You have always been such a benefactor to me. You even fought for me with the youngest brat of the old age. She is their sister. Nandini. You are my sister too. You are my sister like the youngest brat, I am your brother. Komakin. You treat me as your sister since I married another. It is for the pride of your clan. But how can I consider the emperor's sons as my brothers, as long as they are born to rule the three worlds? Nandini, you don't understand what I am saying. You are truly my sister, the daughter of the ruler of the three worlds. Hearing this, Nandini laughed happily. I don't know if their wills are confused or if I'm crazy. She said. Not paranoid. Not crazy. So you're mocking this monster. Look at me, Nandini. Do you really look like a lover? Sir. Look at my face and tell me. If you look at me, do you look like the princess of the emperor? Is the emblem of the royal clan visible on my face? Nandini. I have seen your face since you were a five-year-old girl. I have been amazed at the incomparable beauty that shone on your face. The reason for it is only now known. It was only halfway after leaving Kanchi. Among the people who lived in the Chola clan, there is no one as beautiful as Vaithumbarajan's daughter Kalyani. She is my grandmother. He is still alive in old Are. Even after seventy years of age, the divine beauty of his face will dazzle the eyes. All his beauty has now taken refuge in you. It is not from me, not from the younger brat, nor from Arul Mazai. It has come to you through my father. Sir. What do you mean by this? It really seems to me that I have a mental disorder. Or there must be something wrong with my ears. No, Nandini is not. No mental disorder, no disorder in your ear, you are my father's daughter, therefore my sister. Before Emperor Chakravarti married my mother, he fell in love with Amaterasi on an island in the country of Ela. You are her daughter, therefore my sister. Kari Kaler said in a husky voice. Nandini looked at Aditha Kari Kaler for a while as if she was stunned. Then clarity appeared on her face. Sir. Is this the news you learned after you left Kanji? She asked. Yes Nandini. After knowing that I understood many things that were not clear before. Come again. Who told them this news on the way? Was it Prince Valadhu? It's him. But he didn't say it was him. The younger brat sent the squat to him. Aha. Uh -huh. 
they have been making so many tricks since the beginning of time to separate themselves and me. Their tricks are still not finished. You are wrong, Nandini. There is no trickery in this. I did not understand the efforts of the big bratty champion Mathavi to separate you and me in the slightest. I was angry beyond measure for that. It is now clear how much he saved us from a terrible accident. But they could have told you the truth then. They have done a great injustice, they have harmed me too, let what is gone be gone. Let us both forget what is gone, let us forgive even if we cannot forget. Sir. Did Prince Valadhu meet them on the way and tell them only this story? Did he tell them anything else? Asked Nandini. Why do you call it a story, Nandini? Don't you have faith? Said Adhitharakalar. Is the news you told so easy to believe? Could I have achieved this fate by being born as the Emperor's daughter? Could I have undergone such terrible sufferings? Let Vandiyadeva's words be true. Did he say this only? Did he say nothing else? Said Nandini. Kari Kaler hesitated a little and said, Yes, he also told me another news. He said that you are with the conspirators of the Pandya country. He said that he is making a gongan to impregnate the Chola clan. For that, he said that you are worshipping with a sword with a fish symbol on the handle. In the Kalatakarai forest, someone placed a boy near the school and called him Manamakuta. Nandini. Forget all that. You are as entitled to all the pride of the Chola clan as I am. The daughter of Sundara Chola Emperor. Our dear sister. I will make it my first duty to make amends for all the injustices done to you so far. Sir. You believe so much, don't you? If that's the case, why did you wait so long to come to Katapur? Why didn't you make an effort to meet me earlier? It was because of the confusion in my mind. I needed time to settle our new relationship in my mind. I was also looking forward to an opportunity to explain everything. Is this news that can be told in front of many people? Fortunately, a wild boar and a leopard gave me such an opportunity today. Nandini interrupted and said, Sir. Wild animals are wicked. But they are not as cruel as human beings. I have come to know this only today. Sister. You said a while ago that you can forget everything that has gone. I also agreed to that. I asked you to forgive me even if you can't forget. You didn't respond to that. Come again. I will forgive all the betrayals and crimes you have done to me before, maybe I will forget. But today's betrayal will never be forgotten, I cannot forgive. Oh! What have I done today? I have known and committed no treachery to you. I'm telling you it's coming, look at that thorn. You mean mighty. You made him embrace my whole body and bring it to shore. You were watching it. Can I forget this? Or can you just forgive? Karakalar's head really started to spin hearing the terrible words that Nandini was saying in this way. The marble hall, the water of the lake and the forest trees all swirled. After a moment's pause, she said, Sister. Nandini. Can what you say be true? I really don't know what to believe. Can Vandiyathevan be so naive? Did I even think a little while ago that he would marry this ghost girl Manamegali? said. Sir. Don't just take my word for it. You always act in a hurry. Don't do it this time. Wait two days and watch his actions. You'll know for yourselves. Said Nandini.